been looking at what you can do with layers in the past couple of videos. Today, I'm going to show you how you can use overlays to really draw some attention and give your photo a little bit of a stylistic look. So what we're going to do is click the plus icon here. Once you hit the plus icon, you're going to end up with something that says you're about to create it on one file. If you don't want to see this, you can check the block that says do not show this message again and then hit add layer. Once that's done, you're going to be brought to a dialogue. Now I'm using overlays that are found inside of my backgrounds really quickly. If you don't know how to get those added, I can go ahead and hit cancel here. Go hit file, manage extras, and then click on backgrounds and click import. And then you'll go find wherever the item is that you want to use. Now, this video is not sponsored or not, I'm not an affiliate, but I purchased these Atmos um, overlays and I use them from time to time. So by clicking on here, I can go ahead and hit open. And then instead of me putting all of those overlays into one folder, I'm just going to hit add category, call it Atmos for three, hit OK, and then hit OK again. On one's going to think about it, and it's going to put all of those overlays, which are uh, photos that are on a black background. And when you use a blend mode, it essentially gets rid of the background and leaves just the item that was photographed. Most of these are light uh, imitations or some form of dust or mist or clouds or things of that sort. And I'm going to show you the power here once this gets loaded. Now, when you click on your plus icon, you're likely going to be on something like this, which is the folder that your image you opened is located in. At the top, you can click on extras and then you get these two folders or maybe you have more. I'm not sure. Let me know in the comment section below how many folders you have here. And if I click on my extras or double click on that, now I can see the backgrounds, borders, brushes, and these are all correlated with things that are in different aspects of your on one library, so to speak. So if you're using the texture filter, you can double click this and you can see all of the textures that you have available. Now, if you wanted to, you can even like if I want this texture uh, or a texture out of this folder, I can open that up. This is one of the on one plus textures that I get for being a member. Uh, if I click that and I hit add as layer, what you're going to see is on one drop this in as its own layer. And the power of this is really just being able to use blend modes to get this to look the way you want it to look with the image. Now, this is not the overlay that I wanted to use or want even want to use, uh, but just showing you, you know what, we will use it because I've already put it in here. So I'm gonna go with, let's go with uh, our one overlay. Yeah, we'll go with overlay because we're gonna go for a really edgy look. Now, this isn't taking up enough of the photo for me. So what I'm going to do is come over here to the transform. I'm just going to reform this image by clicking and dragging up and essentially just resizing it to cover the entire uh, canvas for my image. Now, this is a freeform type of thing. So play with it however you see fit. And then I may even just rotate this a touch uh, and really just get those those scratches to make sense with my overall image. I think I'm going to go with that. Hit the letter Z so that way I am off of my um, my transform tool. And now let's go ahead and modify this a little bit. I think we need to mess with the shadows because I don't want to over darken the image. Let's see what midtones do for us. No, not going to mess with that. Uh, but maybe adding in a little bit of structure and let's throw some dynamic contrast on here. And there we go. So now we're really starting to get that edgy look that I want to go for. Uh, what we're going to do, let's see if we can mask out that color. So we'll click here. Uh, let's see. That's not giving me the preview. So it doesn't look like it wants to catch the car uh, just yet. So all I'm going to do is hit the letter B. Let me reset my brush 
to a basic shape, get my feather all the way up to 100%, then I selected the basic shape. There we go. Now I have the basic shape. All right, and I need to put my feather up to 100%. I'm just gonna go ahead and paint away the dynamic contrast from the car because I don't really need it on the car. Um, and then I'm gonna make a larger brush, pull down on my opacity, and I'm just gonna kind of fade it away from areas like here and even down over here. So that way there's not too much uh, being brought in with contrast in those particular areas. So that's one layer added. And I'm just gonna rename this Scratch. S-C-R-T-A-C-H, okay? And now I'm gonna hit the plus icon and we're gonna navigate to the extras folder, go come back over here. We're gonna come to our backgrounds folder and I'm using the backgrounds folder for my overlays uh, just because that works the best for me. Now, if you actually wanna use this for backgrounds, then that's something you'll have to consider for yourself. But now that I have that, I'm gonna open up overlays one because this is where like the clouds and the mist and the smoke all of those uh, textures are in here, um, or overlays are in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on smoke number two, because I kind of like the shape of that. I'm going to hit add as filter, or add as layer. And again, I'm presented with the uh, image over my last image. So all I'm going to do is hit the gear icon and come down to screen. And that's going to get rid of all of the other things that are happening here. Now, this is gonna be a build-up effect, so one layer at a time, but I'm gonna hit the letter V so I can get my move tool or my transform tool, and I am going to move this into the position that I think would make the most sense. So I'm gonna pull that maybe to about there, and we'll come all the way down over here, and I think I'm going to be good with that placement so i'll hit the letter z and then we're going to pull down on the opacity here because that's a little too strong um for my personal taste i think that'll work and then i'm going to go ahead and right click on the smoke two and i'm going to hit duplicate layer this does exactly what you think it's going to do it's going to duplicate your layer uh this time i'm going to hit the letter v and i'm going to pull this down over here and maybe even reshape it a little bit because I want to make the, the ground look like uh, it's covered in smoke a little bit. So we'll pull that out like so. And I think I'm even going to rotate this just a bit, rotate that there, and we'll pull that up. And so now what I need to do is remove the smoke from the vehicle. And how I'm going to do that is with a mask as you probably already know. So I'm gonna hit the letter B on my keyboard here once this allows me to. Hit the letter B, make it a little bit smaller. Uh, and we need the opacity to be up pretty high. Doesn't really matter, but I do, I, I do want some of the smoke to stay around the car. So we'll do that like so. And then what I'm gonna do is come back to the previous smoke layer and hit the layer mask to that and we're going to get rid of some of the smoke that's on the car here just by painting over like so because we don't we don't, we don't want to cover the car all the way uh, and maybe I will pull the opacity down and just start to paint that back in until it builds up so now that I'm on painting I'm just going to build this up over the car and I think that looks pretty good uh, I could absolutely work on this so much more now what I don't like is the fact that this is really really uh, prominent down here towards the end so what I'm gonna do is click back to my previous layer and just so it's easy for everyone to follow along I'm gonna label this smoke bottom and then We'll label this one smoke top. I'm going to hit the letter M to grab my masking bug. 
and I'm going to just go ahead and drop this down towards the bottom. I'm just going to go ahead and taper this out and pull this until I think it gets to where I want it to be. I think maybe something like that is what I'm going for. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this down just a little bit because I, I do want this to really fill the space down here in the lower right as well. But I like the way that, that that's working out. Um, and now we're going to add in some light for the foreground, or I'm sorry, for the, uh, the car here to the headlights and maybe even put a lens flare if I could find one. So let's go ahead and hit the plus icon. We're gonna click on backgrounds again. This time we're gonna to come to Atmos number two and we're gonna find a light that looks pretty good. Uh, what I'm looking for is something that I can put onto that headlamp. Let's see what's in Atmos three. I think we're gonna find it somewhere in here. Let's see. I might be able to use glass number 10 or yeah, let's go with glass 10. Let's see what we can make happen with that. So I'm going to click it, add the layer. It's going to pop up over the top like normal. And you already know once it pops in, I'm going to drop it to a screen overlay. And we might even do a hard, we'll do soft light. We're going to do screen. I'm going to go ahead and grab the transform tool and let's zoom out because this one is larger than the size of our image. And by the way, when you work with layers, you are adding more uh, size to your, your file. Okay. Now, one of the pro tips here, when you want to resize something like right now, I'm using, I'm resizing it in a free transform. Let me just go ahead and reset that. What I want to do is put this back onto screen and then hold down the shift key and drag that in. And it's going to keep it proportionate to whatever uh, the dimensions were at the time that you started to transform it. So now I have something that's a little bit more proportionate. I'll pull this like so and we're going to zoom back in. And once we're zoomed in, I'm just gonna go ahead and rotate this. And we are going to put this right on top of that headlamp and resize this so that way it makes sense. Make it nice and narrow because the headlamp is pretty narrow, right? Now, once we get this into place, it's a little bit of finagling that you have to do, but now I'm just gonna pull this out and we'll reposition it so that way kind of takes up the whole area and maybe pull this back down because I want it to be kind of a narrow look. It's not going to be the absolute greatest effect that I could put onto this image, uh, but it's going to be the effect that I put onto the image nonetheless. All right, so now that I have that light there, it just doesn't look quite convincing. And for me, what I think it needs is some lower opacity or I need to lower the opacity. And we're gonna throw a photo filter on top of it and just give this a little bit of color. Uh, because right now, everything is just white and bland. Um, and that's just not as entertaining to look at. So we'll hit photo filter. And I'm gonna go ahead and move this over to a more orange looking color. Uh, we'll pull up, we'll crank up on the amount for a second here. and. Let's just reposition that again. I think that looks pretty good. And let's see if maybe adding a flare over the top. So we'll do, let's go with textures because I think I have a lens flare pack in here somewhere. Mm, no, I have a light leak pack. I thought I had a lens flare pack. Um, and for the sake of not going into one of my plugins, uh, we'll leave that alone. So we'll just go ahead and cancel out of that. And we'll roll with what we got right here. And then I'm just going to pull down on the opacity just a little bit more. Um, and I think you get the idea. I've added four layers on top of the original image. And obviously I can go back and re-modify all of these. Now, in the event 
that you say, you know what, I want to put a LUT over the entire image to really kind of pull uh, all of the colors and the looks together. But what you want to do is make sure that all of the layers you want to include into your stamped layer, which is what we're getting ready to create, have a filled in bubble. You'll right click on one of them and you'll come down to this command or this option that says new stamped layer. When you click that, you're going to give it a second to think about what it wants to do. And now we have a new stamped layer and I'm going to relabel this stamped layer. This is the way that I would, would recommend you work inside of On1 if you're using layers and you want to stamp everything uh, to one, one layer at the end uh, because this is a non-destructive way. So if I turn this off, you can see that I still have all of my layers down here. I can go back and re-edit. I can delete this layer and it'll be fine. Uh, but what I want to do is add a filter and we're going to just add a simple LUT filter uh, because that's an easy way of establishing a style over your image. Um, and this seems to be, in my opinion, something that would benefit from a more brown overtone. Uh, so we'll just pull this down a little bit and I think we'll even work with our blending options here. Let's see what happens if I pull that out of the highlights and maybe even pull it a little bit out of the shadows and whatever it's perceiving as a skin tone, which would definitely be that light source. Um, I think we're getting a more interesting look. I could absolutely play around with this a whole lot more and obviously take this in so many different directions, but for the sake of not making, uh, a eternal tutorial on how you can use overlays and stuff like that. I will end it with adding a big softy because I think a big softy just does so much to this image um, and is an easy way to really just hone you in to the atmosphere of what you have. So let me just show you where we came from because I think that matters. So this is the basic edit image, which is great by itself. I don't think that there's anything wrong with it, uh, but maybe if you want to take it to a whole different level, give it a different look and vibe, then you can do something like this using overlays and you get this. So I'm going to leave it there, but if you have questions about how to use layers inside of All One Photo Raw, please drop it in the comment section below because I think that there's a lot of value in understanding how to use layers uh, and especially using overlays because this is where layers really shines to me when using On1. Now, if you're looking to pick up On1 or if you already own On1 and just want to pick up some of the assets that the On1 store has available, consider using my discount code in the description box below, FreeWillPhotos20. You save some money at checkout and I get a small commission. It's a win-win and I greatly appreciate it. And until next time, I want you to stay inspired and keep creating. Peace.